Good morning, Christ Church. Um, and here's the tricky one. Happy Epiphany. Yeah. <laughs> You're all like, I don't know what that is, but yay. Don't worry, we're going to talk all about it. My dear friends, good morning and welcome to church today. My name is Pastor Beth. I am the pastor here at Christ Church United Methodist, and it is so fantastic to have you celebrating the second day of the new year here with us. Yay! We have a couple of things to share with. I know, clap, that's just fine. Um, I have a couple of things to share with you before we get started today. The first one is if you picked up one of these prayer cards, please know, or uh, identification cards because you're in church for the very first time, please feel free to fill this out. Your information is held by the office and we keep really good and safe track of that. And then on the back is a place to share prayers and praises. If you have a prayer concern or a joy that you either want to share with the community or you would like your pastor to pray over during the week, please take a moment to fill that out and share that with us. Also, I know some people have been asking, do we collect an offering? <laughs> That's like my favorite question ever. Yes, we do. Uh, of course, the greatest offering we have to offer is the gift of ourselves um, and the way that we are with our communities. But if you're feeling inspired to give a financial gift, we have a giving box in the lobby. So on your way out, you can just drop this prayer card and a gift in there, and that works great. Also, Hopefully, as you were coming in, you were able to pick up a communion set. Uh, we are doing communion in these little self-serve cups. The wafer is the little crispy thing on top that rattles, and the juice is the liquid. Please <laughs> make sure you open the juice side up, <laughs> because if you open it like that, it'll be a mess. Um, and it just doesn't matter how awesome you are at turning wine into something that's clean, it will still get over you. Also, it is non-alcoholic. And now, I would like to invite Tom Haslag up to make a very important announcement, and I'm gonna make you go all the way up there, I'm sorry. He's getting his steps in today. <laughs> Which one? Either one. Well, good morning. Good um, morning. I'm sure you've all heard of Isaac Newton and his theory of gravity and uh, <laughs> how it was an apple that fell from the tree that led him to that theory. Well, it wasn't an apple. It was a Christmas tree ornament. <laughs> that led him to the what goes up must come down theory. So on Saturday at 9.30 in the morning, we are hosting a what goes up must come down party in honor of Sir Isaac. And we will be taking down all our Christmas tree and decorations for Christmas here in the sanctuary and downstairs in Fellowship Hall. So if you have an hour to spare or you can stay for the duration. Uh, it would be much appreciated. So I hope to see you all there on Saturday, 9.30. Bring your mask or we'll supply one for you. Thank you. Tom. Yeah, give him a hand. <laughs> all right, so I will see you all at 9.30 next Saturday for our theory in physics. And now, my dear friends, let us worship God together.
Please stand as you're able and join me in the call to worship. Arise, shine, for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord has risen upon you. For darkness had covered the earth and peoples, but now God's light has come, shining out in the darkness. So let us lift up our eyes and look around. Let us see and be radiant, so our hearts thrill and rejoice. Amen. And if you are under the age of 18, come on up. We're going to do a children's moment. Don't be shy. I promise not to bite. I'll have my mask on. <laughs> you guys are so brave. Thank you. When I was growing up, I went to this church that sometimes there were lots and lots of kids, and sometimes there were only two of us, and it was me and my sister and the pastor, and uh, those were always strange days. <laughs> so can you guys give these kids a huge round of applause for being brave enough to come up here? You guys are awesome. Hello. And how are you this morning? Good. Everyone's good. Okay, so... I have some things up here that are not usually up here. If you were here last time, you might notice. What, what are some of the things that weren't here last time? Okay, yep, we got that. And then you raised your hand. What else is here that wasn't here last time? This, yep, okay, what else? Do you see anything else up here? Holy smokes, that's right, yes. Okay, yep, exactly. How about you? Do you see anything you didn't see last time? Oh, you nailed it. Absolutely. Okay, so we have up here some wise men because it's Epiphany Sunday, which is the Sunday we celebrate the day that the three kings brought gifts to Jesus. Except that we don't actually know how many kings there were, and they weren't actually kings. They were just wise people. So that's a little confusing, right? All of it's confusing. But the thing that isn't is they all had gifts. Did you guys get any gifts for Christmas? Yeah, what did you get? Oh, a skateboard. That's awesome. How about you? Did you get anything? A hoverboard? Okay, it's a skateboard hoverboard. That's awesome. How about you? You got a spider? Like a spider man or like an actual spider? Oh. 
oh my goodness, that is so cool. How about you? What did you get? The Nintendo things? That is so cool. Oh my gosh, holy smokes. Well, you guys got some really cool gifts. And today we are celebrating the gifts that all of us bring to God. So I thought we could open this gift together. And this was wrapped by Pastor Beth, so it wasn't done very well, right? <laughs> Which one of you wants to pull the paper out of this bag? All right, how about the three of you take a hold of that and just pull it right up? Nice job. All right, and let's see. I want you to reach in there and pull out whatever is in there. It won't hurt. Nice job. All right, what is it? It's a mirror. Okay, take a look in that. What do you see? Okay, pass it on down. What do you see? Okay, how about you? What do you see? Awesome. Oh my goodness, you guys all see yourself in this mirror. And you know why? Because God gives the gift of you to the world. And you are one of the most important gifts that God can give anybody. So throughout the rest of this year, I want you to remember how important you are as a gift to everybody you meet. Can you do that for me? All right, will you pray with me? Fold our hands. I know, right? I used to say the same thing. All right, I want you to repeat after me. Dear God, thank you for the gifts we have. And thank you for the gift of you, but mostly, thank you for the gift of myself, because I'm awesome, and I will change the world. And now I want you to shout this as loud as you can. Are you ready? Amen. Shout. Amen. And now all God's people said, Amen. All right, thanks, guys. You did great. Have fun in Sunday school. Today's scripture from Ephesians chapter 3, verses 5 through 6 and 14 through 21. In former generations, this mystery was not made known to humankind, as it has now been revealed to his holy apostles and prophets by the Spirit. That is, the Gentiles have become fellow heirs, members of the same body, and sharers in the promise of Christ Jesus through the gospel. For this reason, I bow my knees before the Father, from whom every family in heaven and on earth takes his name. I pray that according to the riches of his glory, he may grant that you may be strengthened in your inner being with power through his spirit, and that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith, as you are being rooted and grounded in love. I pray that you may have the power to comprehend with all the saints what is the breadth and length and height and depth and to know the love of Christ that surpasses knowledge, so that you may be filled with all the fullness of God. Now to him who by the power at work within us is able to accomplish abundantly, far more than all we can ask or imagine, to him be glory in the church and in Christ Jesus to all generations forever and ever. Amen. And from Matthew chapter 2, verses 1 through 12. In the time of King Herod, after Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, wise men from the east came to Jerusalem asking, Where is the child who has been born king of the Jews? For we observed his star at its rising, and have come to pay him homage. When King Herod heard this, he was frightened, and all Jerusalem with him. And calling together all the chief priests and scribes of the people, he inquired of them where the Messiah was to be born. They told him, in Bethlehem of Judea, for so it has been written by the prophet. And you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah. For from you shall come a ruler, who is to shepherd my people Israel. Then Herod secretly called the, for the wise men, and learned from them the exact time when the star had appeared. Then he sent them to Bethlehem, saying, Go and search diligently for the child. And when you have found him, bring me word, so that I may also go and pay him homage. When they had heard the king, they set out, and there ahead of him went the star that they had seen at its rising, until it stopped over the place where the child was. 
When they saw the star had stopped, they were overwhelmed with joy. On entering the house, they saw the child with Mary his mother, and they knelt down and paid him homage. Then opening their treasure chests, they offered him gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And having been warned in a dream not to return to Herod, they left for their own country by another road. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. I love that picture. How many of you this morning when you woke up was like, oh yes, where's the snow? And then you were really grateful that we live in a place that it doesn't get a lot of snow, so we didn't have to spend time digging our cars out. Actually, I wish we had. No. <laughs> oh my goodness, so it is Epiphany Sunday, which many of you don't know this, but it is actually my favorite church holiday. Well, it's my second favorite church holiday. My first favorite church holiday is Pentecost. My second favorite is Epiphany. And of course, both of these holidays have to do with the way the Holy Spirit shows up in the world and surprises us. And the way that the Holy Spirit shows up and causes us to ask questions. You know, those questions that you come across that absolutely do not let you go. And I'm not talking about, like, what are we going to have for dinner? Or how am I going to get all of the things done before the end of the day? I mean the ones that echo around in your mind and in your heart and reflect back to you in those moments of silence in your life. Throughout my life, there have been a number of these questions, and every one of them has helped to define my faith journey. These are questions like, who is God? Why does God seek to be in relationship with human beings? If we are made in the image of God, why do we treat ourselves and each other in some of the ways we do? Now, I want you to take a moment and pause and think about the questions that have defined your own faith journey. The Gospel of Matthew is full of those kinds of questions. Who, where, what must I do, Lord? What has happened? How shall we live? Why does this matter? Our story today begins with a question that is posed to the ruler of Israel, Herod, by foreigners, and they ask, where is the child who is born king? It is a question that sets in motion the entire rest of the Gospel of Matthew. Without this question posed by these travelers to King Herod in this moment, Matthew's Gospel would not be the same. 
with the writer's emphasis on Jesus as God's new deliverer, as Moses for this world, for all people, a Moses, and without him there would be no other delivery from God. Jesus is the gift of the Messiah who delivers us from the slavery of sin and death, who grows up in Egypt, exiled from his community the same way that Moses grows up. Without these questions, the questions posed by the wise men to Herod, Jesus as deliverer, framed as the new Moses in the Gospel of Matthew, would not have been part of our Gospel understanding of Christ. The wise men, with their question, their seeking curiosity, set the stage for God's work in this story. And they model for us what it means to seek out God's kingdom in this world. I think it's a fitting way to begin the new year with the revelation that our questions are part of the gift that we offer back to God, part of the gospel news we share with the world. A question like, where have you found Christ this last week? For those of you who've been to the walk to Emmaus, you probably recognize that question. Where have you seen Christ? Where have you found Christ? That question can redefine an entire experience, but the haunting counterpoint to that question, the one we all need to be asking, is where are we looking? Where have we been looking for Christ? And that question can transform our lives. Like the wise men, I find myself often looking for places for Christ in places where I might expect God to show up, where I might expect to find God at work. After all, where else would you look? So the wise men come to Herod, the king, and the halls of power, because where else would you look for a king? Where do you go seeking after God? Are we looking for God in the expected places, or are we paying attention to the signs, like stars and dreams and the movement of the Holy Spirit? Both of our scripture lessons today deal with the revelation of the location of God's salvation. And like Matthew, Ephesians speaks of the mystery revealed among those who do not traditionally belong to the story of God's promise. In Matthew, this revelation begins with wise men, non-Israelites from the East who are wealthy foreigners, elite outsiders, powerful Gentiles. But in Ephesians, the author is speaking about anyone, everyone. The author of Ephesians is making the point that through the power of God, we, my friends, can meet Christ anywhere, in anyone. But most importantly, as we talked about with the kids today, we can meet Christ in ourselves if we are looking. It is not a coincidence that Ephesians chapter 3 moves from a discourse in the revelation of God's mystery in Jesus Christ to any willing to seek out Christ to a series of prayerful petitions that focus on God's revelation within our own lives and souls. Hear the powerful words that the author offers us. I pray that according to the riches of his glory, God may grant that you may be strengthened in your inner being with the power through his spirit, and that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith as you are rooted and grounded in love. These are powerful words, and they are an invitation to all of us to seek Christ within ourselves. And why? After all, the story of the wise men is about seeking out God in the world, paying attention to the signs and whispers of the Holy Spirit outside of ourselves. It's about committing ourselves to follow God's light wherever that light might lead us. But the greatest gift, I think, that the wise men offer is the gift of committing their lives, their effort, their energy, their resources to seeking after God. Friends, they offer the gift of themselves. Yes, they bring gold and frankincense and myrrh, but most importantly, they give the gift of their life energy as they seek after the question, where is the child, the king? Now, how many of you uh, participated in the Advent study in one way or another? I'm, 
<laughs> it's okay. I, I'm like, I'm not judging here. But what I'm curious about is that at the very beginning of the Advent study, there was a phrase that caught my attention from the authors, and they framed the gift of Christmas in this way. This gift, Christmas, is not for you. It's not intended to come from you. It's not a gift for you to open. It is a gift you deliver. It is a gift for God. It is the gift of yourself. The gift of yourself. God doesn't just need anything. God doesn't need anything else from us. Just us right now just as we are, our willingness to ask questions and to wander about with curiosity. The beginning of our own sacred story opens with God forming the human creature in God's image and using God's own breath to give us life. God forms us as caretakers of God's creation, which means one another. And the only thing that God asks of us is to love ourselves, one another, and God with all our being. What the Christmas story asks us, what the gift is, is to remember that origin point, that our call is love, that that is our work. And as Ephesians says, if we can wrap our mind around this, we might be able to receive the next part of this prayer. I pray that you may have the power to comprehend with all the saints what is the breadth and length and height and depth and to know the love of Christ that surpasses all knowledge so that each of you may be filled with all the fullness of God. That is quite a gift. The greatest gift that God gives to the world lives in each of us. And what if when God imagined sending the Christ child into the world 2,022 years ago, God did so because God wanted each of us to find Christ within ourselves. What if God imagined that we as human beings could live with the fullness of God within our own lives? What if you and I are what God imagined? What if we're the gift of God's imagination unbound by God's grace and love? Perhaps then the Ephesians benediction becomes a perfect blessing for our lives in this new year as we seek Christ out in totally unexpected places, from our innermost being to the furthest corner of our lives, as we offer the gift of our own lives in pursuit of this love and grace. And as we discover, my friends, that we are the gift. And so let us receive that benediction. Now, to God, who by the power at work within us is able to accomplish abundantly far more than all we can ask and imagine, to God be glory in the church and in Christ Jesus to all generations forever and ever. Amen.
we have come to that time in our service where we're going to celebrate communion. And if you are watching us online, now is a great time to grab something to eat and drink so that you can celebrate along with us. As a reminder, in the United Methodist Church, communion is open to all people because it is God's gift of grace freely given to us each so that we might truly live in love with one another. Today we are going to be doing a setting of communion that is sung to joy to the world. So when we come to the responsive parts, please be ready to sing that most wonderful hymn that we share together. Friends, behold, Christ is born among us. Christ is among us indeed. Let us sing with joy our praises. We sing with joy. Come among us, our Emmanuel. All creation revels in your glory as Christ reveals your grace and love, your hope moving among us and giving us new life. And so with all your people on earth and the vast company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn singing. moments on earth swaddled and resting in a manger to his final moments speaking comfort to criminals from the cross Jesus life was one of embracing all and teaching the transformative power of compassion today we celebrate the light of Christ's life and we remember the way Jesus gathered us as disciples just as he gathered his friends that last night and sitting with them he took the bread he gave thanks to you and he offered it to each of them saying take and eat this is the gift of my grace my body which is given for you and for all every time you eat eat in remembrance of me and when the supper was over, he took the cup and he gave thanks to you. And he offered the cup to each of his disciples saying, drink from this all of you. For this is the cup of the new covenant poured out for you and for all for the forgiveness of sins. It is a covenant of compassion and salvation for all people. Every time you drink, drink deeply and know the love of God. And so in remembrance of these mighty acts of grace, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a joyful and life-filled gift in union with God's work in Christ Jesus as we sing thanks for this mystery of faith. of love is pouring out over each of us and over the gifts of food and drink we share today just as the starlight of long ago poured out and guided wise men and wanderers to seeing the sleeping child whose love would change the world today let our wonder unite us let our hope empower us and let our joy overflow until all the world knows what God has done 
for love. People said, Amen. Amen. Friends, you may be seated. And now, having celebrated the mystery of God's love given to us, let us receive joyfully the drink and food which has been blessed. Let us eat and drink together now. Please join with me in the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. friends receive this benediction. May God who is beyond time walk each moment by our side giving us peace, hope, joy, and love, lighting our way through Christ and filling us with life abundant 
in the Holy Spirit. And all God's people said, Amen. Amen. Happy New Year, church. Happy New Year. You may be seated for the postlude.